What is up? Good morning, good afternoon, whatever time you are watching this. No, two important things before we get started. Brother David loves you so much, and Jesus loves you way more than I can love you. Come on, come on. Today, we're going to be in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 through 13. We're going to be talking about who are you going to serve. This is key in life to understand who you're going to serve. You don't want to miss, listen, if you miss any of this sermon, you miss all of it. Make sure you tune into the very end if you truly want to be able to serve Christ and not serve the world and or the devil. Because when you're either serving one or the other, you're either serving in the world for the devil or you're serving in the world for the Lord. And we're all we're always in the world because that's where our fleshly body is. But yet we are called to be set apart from the world. So I'm going to give you understanding today on who you shall serve, why you shall serve him, and the purposes behind it. I'm telling you right now, you don't want to miss any of this. Because if you miss any of it, you're going to miss all of it. Deuteronomy 10. Verses 12 and 13. And now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? Now, this is what he requires of you, old to new. To walk in his ways and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. This is one thing no one touches on. He commands you this for your good. Now, listen, everyone thinks, oh, I step into the Lord. He takes away all my fun. I can't go out. I can't have a good time. I can't. Listen, I have way more fun in the Lord than I ever had drinking or partying or doing drugs or anything like that. So you have to have the understanding that he says this for your own good. What's the first commandment he commanded us in the New Testament? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. What is this? And now, O Israel, what does your Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God? Fearing God is the beginning of wisdom in your life. You have to understand who are you going to serve. You're going to serve the one that comes to steal, kill, and destroy in your life, or are you going to serve the one that has come to give you life and life more abundantly? It's your choice who you want to serve. He's not going to ever force you to do what you don't want to do. But I'm telling you right now, he says this for your good. There's a reason why he put that for your good because it benefits you, it gives you abundant life in the matter. Joshua. 22 verse 5 but take careful heed to do the commandment and the law which moses the servant of the lord commanded you to love the lord your god to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments to hold fast to him to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul who are you going to serve are you going to serve god with all your heart with all your soul and then and in return reap abundant life in him are you going to serve the devil, which for a temporary pleasure, you will have temporary pleasure with the devil in the world. You know, having sex out of marriage, partying, drinking, doing drugs. There is a time in sin for pleasure. There is. The Bible says that. But then it's taken away. There's so many times where you'll have pleasure. I was a sinful man before I was saved. And there were so many times where I would be in sin and it would be enjoyable for a moment. And then the rest was destruction. You might have an hour worth of good and 15 days worth of torment. You know, is it worth it? No, it's not. He came to give you life and life abundantly. And he says to walk in all of his ways, walk in all of his commandments, serve him. It's not like you're serving him to not get something. He says, hey, if you serve me, I'll bless you. Hey, if you do this, I'll do this for you. Hey, if you do this, there's always a reward for doing something for God compared to the reward from the devil when you serve him is more hurt, pain, and destruction. I had the blessing to be able to preach at an elderly home yesterday. And I told him, you have to understand, nothing that is bad comes from God nothing the devil comes to steal kill and destroy god came to give you abundant life all sickness all disease everything that's bad comes from the evil one it's not like god's like oh it's time to punish my people if it was like that he would have punished us and not saved us he died for us while we were all in sin there wasn't one good person that walked upon the earth it wasn't like he was like oh well i got five good people you know what? i'll send my son now everyone was in sin everyone was lost and yet he still gave his life for you all right, let's jump ahead and go to Matthew 6, 24. 6, 
24. This is Jesus speaking. No one can serve two masters. I want you to really pay attention to this because so many people think they can have the world with the devil and they can have God, but you can't. No one could serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he'd be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, he's saying God and mammon. Mammon is riches, uh, fame, all the stuff that the world promotes for you to have. It's not that it's bad to have. It's okay for a Christian to be rich. It's okay for a Christian to be famous. But you can't serve that as your master. Look at people like Kim Kardashian or Beyonce or Eminem or any of these people. They serve mammon as their master. They serve the devil as their master. They're puppets connected to a puppeteer who's the devil. They don't think for themselves. They don't go out and speak for themselves. They speak what they're told. That's why you had Eminem jumping up uh, saying he's for uh, Harris or whatever. He's, he's, he's a puppeteer. He's, he's, all he is is getting his strings pulled. He's nobody. He does what he's told so he can hold the position that he has. He is nothing but a puppet. They're all puppets. That's what you become when you serve mammon, when you serve the world, when you serve the devil. You become a puppet connected to an evil puppeteer. Listen, this is powerful if you grab hold of this. Because you have to understand you cannot serve two masters. You can't have the world and have the Lord. You just can't. So many people are living their lives in the world, living their life, and they don't even go to church on Sunday. And they think, oh, well, you know, I'm saved. God, I've confessed. I'm born again. I'm saved. But yet I just watched a guy. I just literally watched a guy. And he said that. He was seeing a vision from God. And he said 95% of everyone he's seen out of 2,000 people, 50 people got saved. I want you to just really understand, out of 2,000 people, he's seen a part of Judgment Day, and 50 got saved. 95% of people are going to hell. Do you, do you even understand that? I'm asking you that question today. Is what you're doing today worth it? I'm not saying you got to be perfect, but I am saying you got to serve him and not the other. You cannot serve two masters. <clears throat> Let's jump ahead to Galatians 5. Galatians 5, 13 and 14. Nope, sorry. John 12, 26. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. Where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him and my father will honor. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. So the key to serving Jesus is what? Following him. You follow him by being in his word, by partaking in his church and participating on Sunday and following after him. So many people think, oh, well, I don't got to go to church, but they don't read the Bible. They don't pray. And if they do pray, they pray asking, Lord, I need this. Lord, I want this. Lord, I want this. He's like their little magician in heaven and they just want him to poof up gifts all the time. There's no real relationship. There's no solid ground. If anyone serves him, anyone serves me, let him follow me. Galatians 5. <clears throat> 5, 13 and 14. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. When I sat in front of all the elderly people yesterday, I said, the Bible says we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. I said, we come here today to love you as we love ourselves. I didn't go to sit there and go into to the elderly home on my Saturday morning to do anything less than lead these people closer to Jesus. Loving my neighbor as myself. Am I perfect? No, I'm not sitting here on a pedestal saying I've been perfect. I'm not. But I am being perfected in, in him. I am pushing towards him. I am serving him. Are you? I'm asking you that question. I really want you to dig deep down in it. Are you serving the Lord? Are you truly looking towards Jesus? Or are you looking towards your next paycheck? Are you looking towards getting a BMW or a Ferrari or whatever it is? What are you looking towards? You know, I've, I've watched people, and look, I'm not saying this is bad, but I watch people unbox cars. I watch people unbox things of the world, and they, 
You've never seen such joy. And then they go to church and they sit in a seat and they don't shout. They don't jump. They don't tell none of their people that they, they're next to or know of, of Jesus. How are you as a Christian supposed to be set apart if your own people you're around don't even know that you serve the Lord? That you're in church and you can't even jump up and down, but you can go to a football game on Friday night and scream. I watch, listen, I listen, I don't like football games. I'm going to tell you why. I do and I don't. I don't because when I go there, it makes me really, really sad. I see a whole stadium of people shaking bells, screaming, yeah, go, go. I've never seen so much excitement. And those same people go to church and they won't even shout a hallelujah. They won't even give the same push they give in the world for the things of the world for God. And yet they call themselves a Christian. Many in that day will say, Lord, Lord, did I not do this? Did I not do that? Lord, Lord. They're only going to say, Lord, Lord, if they knew him as Lord. And what does he say? I never knew you. Please, Lord God, know me. Know your servant David that searches after you with all I have. Know me, O oh Lord God. Know me. That's a tough one. It hits deep when you think about it that way. All right, let's finish this up here with 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture, not some all, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That the man of God, first off, you're going to be a man of God and or woman of God, may be equipped. Do you want to be equipped for every good work? then the scripture is what you need. I tell people all the time, I'm glad everyone follows me. I'm glad you watch these videos. I love you a lot. I really do. But you need to be in the word yourself. Okay, don't just take what Brother Dave says. Be in the word yourself. That's why I I don't speak. I'm not out in some distant fairyland giving you some doctrine that's not reality. I preach out of the word. I do things out of the word. I teach every day on my story on all my networks out of the word. Why? I want you to get in the word because the word is the key to get in you to be able to what? Reproof, correction, instruction, doctrine. Right there. You want to be able to serve God with all you have. That's the key. So if you want, if you haven't been serving the right master, I want you to say this with me today. Say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are Lord, that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you for forgiving me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for filling me. Give me a new heart of flesh. I receive my new heart of flesh. I today, Lord God, creator of the heavens and the earth, am going to serve you with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my strength. I surrender my life completely to you today, Jesus. In your mighty, glorious name, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, type in the comments, I said that prayer. Watch my uh, one of my pinned videos on what to do after you receive salvation. If you'd like to partner with me, you can click my links up on my pages for my website that i got to edit. And I would love for you to partner with me so we can help those in Africa that I've been supporting. I haven't been able to help them as much as I usually do because I'm not making what I used to make. But I'm believing for God to turn that around because I really want to see a big move of Uganda in Africa. But it takes money. Money is a great tool to be able to do great things with when it's used in the right manner. But money can also be a very big hindrance because a lot of people serve that kind of mammon. Don't serve the mammon. Make the mammon serve you. We were created to be kings and priests on this earth for God as a joint heir with him. Rule and reign as you're designed to rule and reign with full dominion, but all glory to God. I love you. You're amazing. I hope you have a great, phenomenal, blessed, amazing day. Come on.